Grand Rising to the Air. Today is August the 16th, uh, 1440. It is um, 2020 on the Gregorian calendar. And uh, let's see. Okay. I am going to. It's not there at all, I guess. Um, okay. So we were just talking about how each one of us started has has in our in our makeup makeup in our DNA in our DNA. And, and it's not DNA, and it's not have O and have O and A. I'm getting a little, getting a bit, little bit of feedback, so I'm going to go, so ahead, go ahead and go ahead and see so that we can just get through this part. Okay, and so uh, we we each have within our makeup something that when we speak, there are going to be some more who hear our voices, and they're going to wake up based on what we say. And so each one of us, it is incumbent upon each one of us to speak publicly about all that we say and do. And when I say publicly, you know, not everyone's going to want to be on YouTube and do video and all that stuff. I don't mean like that, but I mean um, at some point, even if it's just going to the grocery store and saying I'm, I'm a Moorish American and we don't do the math thing or whatever, you know, however, however the ancestors have you present yourself. Um, we're going to have to, there, there is a certain segment of the population, even at the grocery store, there are some of us that are sleeping who work at the grocery store who are going to hear that there are some who look like them coming in and they're not wearing masks and there's not, you know, now again, if more want to wear, wear masks, they, they can do whatever they want because they're sovereign. But for those of us who don't wear them, you know, that is how some are, that's the only way that some are going to wake up, is they have to hear our voices. And that goes for each and every more. You have um, a voice that there's a certain segment they're not going to wake up until they hear from you, until they see you demonstrating. And so it is incumbent upon each of us to go ahead and demonstrate. Now, um, those who have, thank you so much for that, uh, Justice uh, Gregory. If you want to go ahead and announce that, um, we're going to, let's, let's get the court action uh, announced so that the heirs can hear uh, for those who want to uh, join the court action. Go ahead, Justice, if you want to announce the court action. Islam, Carolyn Wiggins Ale. Yes. Near Alabama Territory. Um, I have one on Friday, August the 21st at 3 p.m. Central Time. The phone yes. number is 425-436-6200, and the access code is 324-378, and the ID number is Wiggins EL2016, Islam. Islam. Any other court actions? Please um, go ahead and announce them now. And I'm going to put the ones that I know about. <laughs> in yes, the Islam. Well. Islam. You know, this is Valerie Barker Bay, and I have Islam. a court action today, August 19th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 Mountain, and 11 Pacific Standard Time. And the, the call-in number is 425-436-6200, access code 181995. 
Empress, Thank you. Um, can you put that in the chat as well? Um, yeah, those who can put theirs now. in the chat, put it in the chat. Um, Empress, yes. yours, uh, yours is Wednesday. What's the date? Wednesday the? August 19th. August 19th. Okay. I'll add At that 2 p.m. Um, Eastern. Eastern. At 2 p.m. Eastern. Okay. All right. Thank you. Islam. Uh, Islam. Other uh, court actions coming up. Islam. Yes. Islam, uh, this is Wilton Turk Bay, Mississippi Territory. Uh, yes. I have my court action uh, August the 20th, 3.30 p.m. Central Time, 4.30 Eastern Time. And, uh, I think that's uh, 1.30 Western Time, uh, Mountain yes. Time, and 2.30 uh, yes. uh, Pacific Time. Uh, uh, call in number is 425-436-6200. Access number is 189766. And email address is, uh, Wilton, W-I-L-T-O-N-T-U-R-K-60 at gmail.com. And, uh, code number is Wilton Turk 601 for that uh, email um, address. Islam. Islam, and I did put yours in the chat, uh, Justice Wilson. And then okay, also, I believe, uh, I put in for Malos, um, Justice Carolyn Wiggins L., I put yours in the chat as well. Um, let's see. And... Um, and then I have one coming up as well on the 25th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, Eastern Daylight rather, or Eastern Time, 4 p.m. on August 25th, which is a Tuesday, next Tuesday. The dial-in is 425-436-6280. Uh, the access is 368-903. And it's Light Bay Morsh Nation on uh, the as the um, uh, as the online ID, and I'll put that in the chat as well. So I'm putting the ones that I that I'm aware of in the chat as well. Empress Malo, Emrojo, El Washita Bay has one on Tuesday, August 18th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific and Arizona time. The dial-in is 518-425-1624, and there's no access code needed. The online ID is Malo and Rojo underscore L underscore Washita underscore Bay. And I put it in the chat as well. So we have several, one, two, or this is Valerie Bob I want to have to put yours on our on our list too so that I'm able to disperse the information as well. Let me make sure I get a, get a photo of that from the chat. Thank you for putting that in the chat. Um let's see. So we have court actions going on all the time. Um those are our top priorities. Our top priority. Why are they our top priority as a nation and as a government? It's because that is how the estate is returned to the heirs, is by court action. Remember, their fake court is what is how they started taking things away. And we were asleep. Remember? We were asleep. And so they use their courts to uh, take things unlawfully and to, you know, um, to uh, rule in their own favor, basically, on our land. And we are reversing all of that and taking all, everything has been returned to the air. And now each one of us must, uh, and I say must because it's really important that we do it, 
um, we we need to to each one of us is a justice already. Okay, we are born the law on this land because we are of the land. Okay, and our ancestors meant for us to govern it and no one else. And believe it or not, we've been governing it in our sleep every time we find something. And so now we're awake, we're the ones doing the governing. We're the ones giving our own selves that which belongs to us. And so when you have a higher court ruling on the public record, no one can dispute that. No one can dispute the ruling of a higher court. We are, and that's all Moors. All Moors are the highest court on the land. All Moors. And it is our responsibility as the heirs and the beneficiaries of the estate to, to, to govern it lawfully using the law um, in our favor against all you know, all who, who are attempting to, to, to use our estate improperly. Our ancestors did it. And if you know the history of the consular court, our consular courts never really went anywhere. Our consular courts have always been active. And in 1956, if you really read those documents about the consular court, we basically consented to not do court actions like we're doing today. We consented to not do that in, in everything. And then their court took over. Their court took over. And when I say took over, we know what their courts are like. And now they, they, they actually had us previously thinking that we had to go there to their court. We never had to go there. When we're governing our own affairs, we never have to go there. Now, Moors who are not doing court actions um, are going to have that programming going on in their heads that they have to go because in their minds, there's no alternative. And they feel like if they get something from a court, quote, unquote, and that those are not real courts, we know that. And so we must, even according to uh, ex parte Milligan, which is which is uh, uh, case law that uh, Grand Sheikh Taj Tariq Bey uh, suggested that we all look into. Ex parte Milligan is states clearly that when the people are running the court, that the others cannot do it. We are the people. No one else is. Everyone else is persons and citizens and corporations. So we have to do that. That's a must. And for those who are who are not doing them, we, we have uh, mock or practice court where uh, um, if you want to get some practice on how to do them, um, you can attend some of the practice court sessions that Wait we have. Time. Wait the time. Malo will do them. Uh, Empress Nalo can can help you with that, and also Empress Jonaya will help you with that as well. Uh, if you have, if you again, if you have any any, if you want to participate in any of the uh, the practice court sessions, also Empress Genesis, yes, in the chat I see you, Empress Genesis. Um, she she will assist as well with uh, the mock court. So get in touch with them if you want to get some, you know, some practice in before you actually do yours. For those who cannot attend the practice court sessions, um, you can go online or go to any of the Moorish American Consulate public, uh, the, the pages on Facebook, the Moorish American Consulate. Um, for example, Moorish American Consulate, um, Arizona Territory. Empress Nalo has, she puts her her court actions on there. Um, mine are on YouTube, so you can go on to YouTube at Like to Deary Bay and write down the script that is used and then do your own court action based on the script that is used. Okay? 
And the court actions, again, are not a reactionary thing. That's not something that we, uh, like when something happens, then that afternoon we do a court action because we're angry that someone pulled us over and did whatever, you know. We don't do them rea in a reactionary fashion. We do them where they are planned out. We, we give they can also be a public. Grand rising. Grand rising. Um, we, we give proper notification. And um, when we give proper notification, we then do the court action because, again, even though they are unlawful with the things that they do, we must be lawful. We have to give proper notification, and then we do the court action, and then we notify the, uh, the uh, provost marshal with regard to our court action um, and our ruling, our justice. All more, it is incumbent. I highly, highly urge you to please start doing your own court action so that you will know and so that those that are attempting to violate you will know that you know you have sovereign jurisdiction over them. Okay? And the, the ultimate, um, the ultimate Invocation of jurisdiction, of sovereign jurisdiction, is by court action. You know, that's the best way to tell them that you already know you have sovereign jurisdiction over them, is by sovereign court action. Um, Justice Gregory Dwayne Wright has a court action August 24th, 9 a.m. Central Time. Um, do you want to give the, uh, I believe you put the email and put the information in the chat. Let me just make sure I didn't miss it. I want to make sure I did not miss the information for that particular court action. Yeah, I think, uh, Justice Gregory, do you want to um, give the information for that court action? I'll put it in the chat, in the chat and I'll read it as, as far as the call-in number. Because we just don't know the call-in number, the call-in number and the access code for your court action. Okay. It, uh, the call-in number for Justice Gregory's court action, the court action is going to be on August 24, 2020, 9 a.m. Central Time. And the call-in number is 425-436-6356. And the access code is 738027. So for those who want to attend this court action, uh, and let me go ahead and get a photo of that so that I can pick that information out as well. Here it is. Okay. It's on. So we have, right now, I believe that six or seven court actions over the next couple of weeks, the next two weeks, uh, six or seven court actions, which is, you know, I'm, I'm loving that because I already know what it means. It means that, that those who are doing court actions now are making history for our nation and for our government. That's history making that those who were initially thought to be Negro, Black, Colored, and African American are actually the government and are actually the authority on the land. Uh, Justice Malo has put in the chat, we want to make sure, for those who want to do the practice court, let me make sure that I get that, a photo of that, so we put that out there as well. Just a moment, let me make sure I get a photo of that. Um, okay, so the, the, the practice court 
is going to be on Monday, August the 17th, that's tomorrow, at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. Central, or yes, 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific, and Arizona. The host justice is Justice Theodore Scott Mitchell Bay, Islam. Overseeing justices are Justice Joniah, Joni L., uh, Justice Wander Genesis Pi L., and Justice Malo L. Washita Bay. Uh, the online, uh, the online, uh, video, online ID for freeconferencecall.com is Theodore, T H E O D O R E. And the dial in number is 602 580 9321. And the access code is 128. Eight five eight three. So if you again, if you've not done a court action and you want to uh, do one and make it so that you can ask questions, etc. However, uh, you want to do it, then please attend the practice court session so that you can get accustomed to doing the court action. They are of the utmost when you talk about. Um, governing our own vast estate. That is our responsibility. Okay. So on October 31st, um, we are going to be, uh, all Moors are invited to, uh, to our territory here at, at Washington Territory. It's going to be, uh, we're going to, um, be visiting the Mima Mound, which is our an ancestral burial place for us. Um, it's at Olympia, Washington Territory. And um, for those who want to attend, again, October 31st at 12 noon. And for those who can't make it here on October 31st, because October 31st is a powerful day. It's very powerful, and I'll tell you about that in just a moment. But for those who cannot make it here to Olympia, Washington Territory, um, go on October 31st, and, and this is just a suggestion, but I, I highly suggest it because it's really important on that day specifically, uh, and also on September 11th, but, but on that day is October 31st is when, when, when all will come here. And we will take that long walk through the burial ground. Um, but for those who can't make it, go into your territories and find the ancient markers. There are many of them in all territories. They're everywhere. Some have Mima Mounds at them, even on the East Coast. There are Mima Mounds there. Some have other mounds or pyramids or uh, ancestral places where our, where we know that our ancestors, uh, were and those places are marked. Um, go there and, and, and let us all join in spirit on that day so that we can all be together in spirit as well. The reason we chose October 31st, it's really called a solemn Sovereign Assembly of the of the Ascendants and the Ancestors. We are the Ascendants and the Ancestors. Of course, we're we're both. We're the Ancestors' return. But the reason we chose October 31st is because that is the one day of the year that the veil between the dimensions is the thinnest. That is why the Albions and the, the foreigners, when they came here, they came up with quote unquote Halloween on that day. And they do things that has everything to do with the dead, skeletons and ghosts and witches and warlocks and magic and all of that. Well, that is a hypothecation of what the day really is. 
what the day really is, is that our ancestors who have gone before us, uh, they are not, we already know we live forever in the spirit realm. And so the veil between where they are and where we are is finished on that day based on the cosmology and astrology, the alignment of the planet, et cetera. Okay. And so we want to reach in to that dimension. You know, we reach into it every time we meditate and come together. We do that anyway. In fact, we're, we're interdimensional already because we are, because we live forever. And we, on that day, we want to, um, connect with the energy, the very powerful energy that are going to be uh, circulating in our atmosphere and around us and within us that day. Additionally, October 31st is um, the one of the full moons for this year because we had 13 full moons this year uh, where the moons are at their fullest according to the astrology and the cosmology. And the month of October has two full moons. One is on the 1st and one is on the 31st. I believe it's the 1st. I know it's somewhere in the beginning of the month. And the other is on October 31st, which to me is very, very symbolic for us that on that day, at that time, the moon is going to be the fullest this year when we're wide awake and can see. So those who can't make it, Find a place in your territory and connect with that ancestral energy. And we're calling it as much of that energy into this realm as possible as we move forward. It is energy that when they say all things work together for the good of us who know who we are, that ancestral energy is what causes, it's what turns everything for our good. It might seem like it's bad. But the ancestral energy, when, when, when the ancestral energy is placed on it, it automatically makes it something that's going to help us and move us forward and elevate us and help us to evolve into our godness, which we already are. It just helps us to see and manifest it. Okay. So um, those who have, I, I did mute the uh, the the um, the sharing sessions, but if you have anything that you want to contribute, please feel free to start six. Uh, you know, since the Albions, that you know they pop in whenever they get ready, and we just end up meeting them and putting them out. But uh, we love them again. Uh, so any who uh, any more who want to um, who want to uh, say anything or anything, just please feel free as usual to unmute. Okay. Um, as far as uh, October 31st, the nearest Islam. Islam. Yeah. Islam, I'm um, Were you saying that if you have anything you wanted to talk about other than um, the visit to Washington? I, I can't. I, can't oh, I, I didn't. It was. You sounded a little bit muffled. Say again. Okay. Is this any better? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I, I had a quick question, and it is unrelated to what you're speaking about now. And I thought I heard you say that if we had anything that we wanted to say. Yes, um, if you, any time throughout the calls, if you have anything you want to say, you can just okay. ask it, and um, and you know, and then and we'll discuss it. Okay, great. Um, I have been doing my demonstrations and with the mailing. And I've been receiving the uh -huh. green card back. However, some of them where the signature um, is supposed to go, it's stating uh -huh. COVID-19. Uh -huh. And I know COVID-19 is no one's name, per se. Uh -huh. They would typically put their signature, the citizen's signature. Uh -huh. And I'm just wondering so, why they would put COVID-19 there in the signature area opposed to their signature. Well, when I went on to their website uh, with regard to that, because I've gotten one of those back as well, um, it just says that it's going to be slower getting there. 
Oh, I see. So they were saying that it's that 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 because of COVID nineteen, things are being slowed down, et cetera, et cetera. Which we rebut that. Um, but they put that one there. Um, so I, I'm according to their website, it slows the mail, the mailing. So I, I see. I just it hasn't slowed anything down here though, from what I've seen. Well, they received it and they signed it COVID nineteen. So I it's just kind of strange. But that is all. I yield. Yes, I'm glad that they received it. And in fact, again, here, um, and and many of you probably are experiencing the same thing. When when I sent the mailings out, they got there quicker than than I had ever expected. Actually, I mentioned this about two two weeks ago. I sent something out on a Monday, and by Wednesday or Thursday, it was there already, signed for, and I had the card back. It was it just and it went from here to Virginia. So um that may just be, you know, that that to them is whatever it is for them. For us, we already know that notice to agent is notice to principal. And so when we give the the uh documents to the post office, we can mark it as it's been received. Now, many of us like to look in the system and see that it's been received or whatever, um, and like the Empress was saying, they did receive it. Um, yes, Empress, go ahead. It's, um, uh, it was, I also am having a challenge with the governor here in Texas. Uh, for some reason, my mail is being accepted everywhere across the country, excuse me, particularly in Washington, D.C., with no problem at all. But your your phone sounds muffled or something. Oh, Can okay. you maybe pull? Yeah, pull it a little. Okay. Okay. Is this any better? Yeah, that's better. That's better. Go okay. Ahead. For some reason, here in the state of Texas, the governor mm -hmm. and the secretary of state will ab absolutely refuse to take any of my mailings. Uh, they send it back to me, I send it back to them, they send it back to me, and I send it back. However, when I send it pretty much everywhere else, uh, particularly in Washington, D.C., they accept all of my mailing. Okay. So how uh, are you using the mailing process that we use? Yes, I am, and I'm using it. Okay. As okay, that's great. When they receive it, first of all, you're not in the state of Texas, okay? Just so, so, so know that you're not in the state of Texas. You are on your own land. <laughs> they don't have any authority, and they're probably not even there. I'll be, I'll, I'll tell you truthfully, they're not there, because in reality, you're the governor, the bay of that territory. But I wanted to say, yes, I wanted to say that that. The fact that they receive it and then they send it back means that they're responsible for the information, okay? And they know that. Well, actually, um, actually I want to make myself clear. This is, what's happening is, is that they, the mail is coming back as if they've never even opened it, and it's stating it's uh, marked in black ink refused, and they're wanting me to submit uh, fiat, which I will not. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, check the mailings, and because they don't normally say anything about fiat unless there's um, maybe a zip code in brackets, or um, you know, a zip code in brackets on our part, because we can't have zip codes on ours. Or okay. if there is any capital letters on our part where where it's coming from, if it's if there are any capital letters there, then that they they know that that's not. Um, they know that that's not uh, how we do things um, because we're working from a sovereign trust and they're working from a corporate trust or we're working from a corporate trust. But they're not even I will double check. However, on my, all of my labels have been pre-printed, you know, that I sent uh -huh. out. And so, mm -hmm. but I will, I will go and do it again. Um, I mm -hmm. was going to just, I guess that I, I don't know if it's safe to say, but I, I'm going to just go and lean them because I can't get them. I can't speak just a little bit clearer because oh, it sounded sure. a little I was going to go move forward with cleaning them because um, I, I'm just having a problem getting my paperwork through to them. 
But I'm like just kind of so confident since DC is accepting everything that in the promo commercial, I will just you know just keep moving forward and ensure that I am um, that their mailings are done properly for the governor and secretary of state here and the territory. Yes. Yeah. Those doing business as governors and secretaries of state, they don't even really exist, honestly. I mean, they're not even a thing anymore. So um, when, you send the, when you send the mailings out, as long as you, send, if you know that you sent them the right way, proceed, because you're the government. Proceed. As long. Proceed with, 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 with whatever, it else, whatever else is the next step for you. Go ahead and proceed. And that goes for anything that we do. Uh, uh, we don't have to wait for their approval. We don't need their permission. We don't need their signatures. We don't need anything from them at all. We go ahead and proceed with whatever it is that we're doing next. And, um, you know, and uh, to, we don't need to interact with them physically at all, ever. You know, at all. Everything that we need on our estate, we can do it without physically interacting with them. That's the part that um, that we are knowing to be true. So when you send the items, just make sure that they're sent properly. And it doesn't matter what's said on the other end. That's like a child. You say the child can't have candy and they start crying and they want to fight a little bit about the candy, and they want to do this and that. And it's like, no, no, it doesn't matter. All of that doesn't matter. You're not getting it, you know. And that's how we are proceeding at this point. And that's not even a contentious proceeding. That is what is lawful and what is right and what is what is what it should be, you know. We don't have to uh, to wait for them to 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 give us anything or you know get their agreement. We didn't need their agreement to begin with. Even for them to be here, we didn't need their agreement. We created. So they have to, you know, they have to do what we, you know, as they're instructed when, when we're competent as well. Um, let's see. Prior to that, I was going to say that uh, with regard to the October uh, 31st, the Olympia Regional Airport is the closest airport to where everything is happening. The Seattle Airport is approximately an hour and 45 minutes from where we're going to be at Olympia. Olympia is uh, ancient Olympus, and the Temple of Justice is still there. Uh, and I think those who are on social media have seen that, uh, but I wanted to make sure that you're aware of that as well. Now, um, we talked briefly about um, where we're going as a nation, and actually not briefly, we talk about that all the time, about where we're going as a nation. Um, knowing that everything that we do, it must be done with nation in mind and not just with one individual or with just us in mind, okay? And so, um, I just had one, one, uh, it's not a, it, well, it is a concern. I'm always concerned about our nation. But as things get better for us, because they're actually, every, things have, have completely turned. And some might have come to that realization, and some may not have yet. Those who, who still think things are crappy, don't worry. You, you're, you will come to the realization and the knowing by your demonstration that things are much better for us and they're getting much better as we go. Um, uh, let's see. And so what I was going to say is my concern is that, and it's just a little bit of a concern, is that as things get better, we get relaxed and don't do and don't continue to govern. That cannot ever happen and it will not happen really on our watch because we love our freedom too much. Um, but I wanted to put that out there that, that 
things are getting much, 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 much better for us. And as it does, we can't, you know, we, we must remain vigilant to govern because we actually have to do this for at least a thousand years and into perpetuity, actually. And so I want us to be sure that we, um, that we keep that in mind. Um, I use the example of, let's just say, an artist or like a, a, a musician. When the musician was hungry, they were willing to do whatever it took. They didn't care whether they got paid or not. They didn't care about any of that stuff. And, and you know, everything is ours already, so that's not the issue. But the musician uh, was put out some awesome music when they were hungry, and they really wanted to be in the industry. And then once they got comfortable, the music got crappy. That's the thing that we will always avoid. We're never going to get to the point. Where, because in reality, as we rise, there's always going to be a higher level above where we are. So we must ascend with the same, if not more, fervor and vision and um, energy and confidence and knowing and law that we're using right now, even where we are. Um, I see in the chat, uh, Empress Genesis is saying, she says that her emotions have been all over the place and she feels this ascension in a major way. That is actually based on the retrogrades that are going on right now. Many of us have had emotions that are going that that want to go all over the place. It's up to us to um, bring everything back within us and calm our, our emotions down so that we can hear from the ancestors. And that's not a that is not magic that that any of us are without. We all have the ability to bring our emotions back into focus and go within, tune everything else out so that we can hear. That's what meditation and um, all that we do spiritually is all about. Because in reality, the real war was, was in our mind. That's where the real war was. War means confusion. If you look up the word war from its very beginning, it means confusion. And so that's why we do the things like Empress Genesis is saying in the chat, go out and ground yourself and do sun gazing and um, drink lots and lots and lots of fresh water and um, study and connect and stay connected with the nation. These calls, you you all have. I mean, you know, you know, because if if, if anyone knows, you know. We all know. We, there's nothing we we don't know in our nation. But these calls and staying connected this way and in other ways, like the court actions and supporting one another, even though we're not in the same territory, that connection is causing the energy to expand and to exponentially multiply the energies of unity and oneness and togetherness and the like-mindedness. It's causing the energies in the atmosphere to multiply. Okay. And when that happens, the whole earth responds to that. Where the bibliotelio text says one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand. If there's just one sovereign on the earth who knows who they are, the whole earth has to yield and, and, and calm down and everything has to get peaceful. Just one sovereign, just one of you, one of us. Not to mention how many of us there are now who know who we are then, of course, the whole earth must stop what you're doing. Everybody stop what you're doing. The air is all awake. Stop what you're doing. 
uh, call it COVID-19, call it whatever you want to call it, stop what you're doing, make sure the heirs have everything they need. We need to listen so we can hear the heirs speaking. And these calls are doing just that. Our voices are being heard. Our court action is actually the, the most profound way that we've been able to affect change on our land. Yes, Islam in the chat. It, yes, it did come to a screeching halt. Um, is there anyone else who has any suggestions in terms of the emotions going here and there and everywhere and getting everything back in alignment with the stars, the cosmos, the earth, et cetera? Star six and uh, just share what you do to get your emotions back into alignment with the earth because that's really what's happening here is we're lining back up with nature, with the, all that is natural. Yes. Uh, Empress, uh, Empress Asupi, do you want to uh, speak to that that you put in the chat? Because that is actually, I'm finding that that's the most effective thing uh, next to just complete, um, completely connecting spiritually and emotionally with the ancestors. So, um, Empress, you can start six if you want to speak to, to speak to that. Because I've actually been that's been that's been a a thing for me over here in terms of getting the things that I eat back in alignment because of the Grand Rising. I see now that the food was the one way that, um, hold on, let me make sure that I can see. Go ahead, Empress. Go ahead, Empress. Islam. Uh, they come as a peer day. I'm in main territory. I, uh, I went um, vegan four years ago. And then I went through a period of a lot of distortion, I would may say, you know, working. And suddenly when I started um, learning about myself and, you know, being who I am, you know, I, um, mastering knowledge, you know, I'm the only one in my whole family. Most of my family is Seventh-day Adventist, so... It went to the point that even my mother stopped talking to me, so it was really stressful. So I kind of forgot about eating the right thing, doing the right thing. And I went through a, 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 being in a shelter, and I was to learn to trust myself. And during that period, my father, um, he became really sick, and then he, he, he moved on in power. So I had was to learn to focus and learn to look within. And into that, I started working back onto my eating the right thing. Because into when it comes to, you know, poisoning and all the different things that are going on with our food and the MGOs and all the different things they throw at us. If you cannot do a lot of investment, either if you can't afford to buy it or grow your own self, pick the right food, you know, it makes a big difference. Because food have their own energy, they vibrate. So if you eat the right food, you know, it keeps your energy in a certain level and it's harder for, it's really hard for anything that has nothing to do with you, attack you or, you know, or invade your shield or come against your own shield. Um, so I, I kind of forget about me, really. You know, I even used to have small cigarettes and I stopped doing the cigarettes thing and, and I kind of went like, doing lavender, vaporizing, uh, you know, doing that natural stuff, and now I'm doing no more nicotine. And I could see the changes, I'm more focused. Instead of getting upset about anybody comment, I just literally just smile. Because first time I would just like, have all these things going on in my head, and you, you know, even though you don't want to pick a fight with somebody, it, it this is like you're more self-aware of yourself, you know, and you reach to that place where you love yourself so much that you don't even worry about what anybody think or anybody comment. You see, in here in Maine, it's very different because there's a lot of Caucasian people here. 
compared to if you've been in Dorchester, Massachusetts. It's, so you know, I'm in a place where people used to be the ones who like to tell you what to do. You know, certain things become a joke. When for me, it's not a joke. And when it's just you and you have all these different people that think one way and you going against what they think, but you're standing on your square, believing you have to think different ways of energizing yourself, like the food you eat, the environment, you know, the energy, the meditation, the adoration, which for me would be not really adoration, or maybe is, but I tend to sit in the morning, see the sun rising, you know, I appreciate even the birds when they sing, I appreciate this wind when you feel it and you skin, even though you don't see it. And little things like that, it makes you self-conscious and self-aware of self and learn to love yourself and you kind of just keep your energy in a place where it's really difficult to, for anybody or anything to distort it or take you off or knock you off on your, on your, on your focus. And self-knowledge of self and really love of self make it make you stronger because if you don't know yourself if you don't love yourself if you if you don't understand history if you don't know any of that anytime when somebody come with you come to you with a doubt or anything it, it really makes you stutter but when you love yourself you know people will say well you're single you you're gonna be single this and this and that I'll be like I'm, i love myself a lot you know i don't need to look certain kind of a way or be certain kind of a way to please anybody. It's all about myself, not it's self and love and love of self. You know, I don't I don't need to entertain certain kind of people even if I don't have friends, but I do have friends because I love myself so much and I know that my ancestors live inside of me so you see i'm not alone because people would think people would kind of think say well she is lonely and i'm like i don't feel lonely one bit but you don't have no friends well well depends of what you use your interpretation of friendship is or you know you don't hang around certain kind of a places again because now you're not not a place in your life where it means everything is everything you know and then I was to learn also to uh, love my mother my sister and everybody in my family and and forgive forgive in spite of what they say and all their action is towards me you know so I reached that place where you know it hurts but now it's like I get it and maybe it's you know eventually they will get there you know so I'm the first one well let's go let's do this you know, so, uh, and when you eat the right food, you know, you're putting time to select the things you eat, what you put in your body, which is very important, it make a big difference than just yeah. picking up stuff in the supermarket. It's, it, it's a little more work because you have to process the food, you have to pre- prepare it. It's something you think ahead of yourself, you know. It's easy to just walk in any convenience store and pick up any foolishness. That's really easy, you know. But when you have to mm-hmm. make your food, when you're not thinking about meat, everybody's like, well, you, you know, chicken, you know, or this. But no, I'm like, I just figure out where well, you got no flour, almond flour, you got... Uh, cashew flour and I make dumplings out of that and I make my curry sauce and it tastes good. You know, I make my fried dough mm-hmm. with my coconut flour and it tastes good. You know, and mm-hmm. I go and get my greens and I learn to just get what I need, not what I want. You know, I don't take an hour at a supermarket. In 15 minutes, I'm out of here because I have my list. I go to what I want. I don't have to waste time looking around at anything because everything looks pretty. Everything is meant mm-hmm. for you to purchase, but not everything yeah, you must yeah. you, you you really need. You know, you, you you go for what you really your body really wants. You you you, you focus. You remain focused, and that's why I've been keeping myself. And you now I start working on my um, I'm working on my leans. You know, start upgrading uh, when it comes to English writing, because my first language was Latin, but it's still Latin. 
So usually I have to think, think, think in Latin and then translate it to English so I could get a full thing. It's just weird with me when it comes to that. So it took me a lot of time. So when I had when I had a template, it kind of made it easy. But some yeah. of the links are, are kind of working on the ending because everything is different. Like right now, I did finish up my trust. And um, so I sent out the letter. You know, first I went there personally and they say, oh, we don't accept none of this. So I'm like, well, then, <laughs> make it hard for me. So then I, I send the, 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 the notice. They didn't say anything. I, I sent it to the, um, I forgot what you call it, the board members, whatever I think it is. And then afterward, I decide, okay, let me just deal with the CEO. So I sent a letter to him. Uh, I ain't getting any response back yet, but I have no problem with the post office. All my the documents went up perfectly. I got my little labels back that said a receipt. So now I'm just waiting to see what he gonna say. He has time to the thirty first, I think I did. So probably this week I probably just send another notice to him and see, you know, if we gonna accommodate because he must. Now, if he don't, well, I was gonna lean and just go to the other bank. So now I'm kind of looking around. I noticing the um, different flags, the commerce flag, I mean the flags, and I say, well, I just have to just work and write down certain um, locations and give, you know, teach people. Because I'm like, you know what? Let me start with the teaching you something instead of you say, oh, well, you got to do this. It, this is the way. So I figure since I have no issues with the post office, I can print. I just got me a printer so and then get it. So it should be here in three days. I yeah. start getting the little things I need little by little. So I can teach people about, you know, this is flag. It's not really a government. It's this, that, that, send you ask the David and see you know and then after saying if you still have that flag then I will send you a notice and if you still have the flag then I would have to give you a link because you know so so people can have the opportunity to see learn know and then well we we, we do what we have to do you know what I mean so yeah. Yeah. food keep you focused I know I'm talking too much so I'm going to get off and yell at me kind of people say what I have to say but I'm very <laughs> excited I'm very yes. excited with all of this I have my family meeting that's why I call it this is my family meeting I try as yes. much as yes. never miss it I was quiet in the background but I say, well let me just put myself up there because I have to start doing my court thing so I have to start getting used to it <laughs> yes yes yes, yes. So. yes. <laughs> So that's where it goes. I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to stop being a little shaking in the background and put myself, because I'm always the kind of person that always to the back, say nothing, keep quiet. So now I'm putting myself yeah. over here because I would have to do that. All right, you're doing the lean day care. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's time for you to start, go make your court thing and speak yeah. and be very clear with it and stand on my square. You know, yes, and there's yes, no emotions yes, with yes. it. It's the law. So I didn't tell my talk about something. It's the law. I don't know what it is. They will call me alien for whatever. I don't care. Some people, some people okay with it. Some <laughs> people appreciate me. And I'm like, you know what? It's not even if you like it, or if you don't like it, if you appreciate it, fine. And if you don't, it's the law. You know, yes, wide it's awake so now. It's long. Yeah, we're not sleeping no more. So he's That's like, who oh, is saying Spanish in Latin? Quita que, quita te que voy. So we, yes. we, we yes. go stand on our square. So yes. Islam, everybody, Islam. much love. You know, Islam. Grand Rise. Islam. Islam. Thank you so Thank much you. for that, Justice Asupi. <laughs> Islam, you are absolutely correct. It does not matter whether they like it or not. We are here to stay. We're not going anywhere. And Empress, make sure you look in the chat at all the love they were sending you while you were speaking. Make sure you, you see that. Because we're here. We're not going anywhere. We're right, right with you, Islam. Um, uh, Justice uh, Micah Tunica L. Bay, do you want to speak a little bit on that? Um, he says in the chat, Islam, I normally do a fast water, fresh vegetables, fruit and then go to the mounds to study on the ground. That is beautiful. I got one of my biggest revelations from the ancestors 
the first time I went to, which was recently, the uh, the the time that I went to the mounds, and I actually sat on one of the mounds. Um, and and when I did that, um, the next day, overnight and into the next day, the ancestors gave me a huge key for us in terms of further manifestation of the estate. And I knew then that the energies there were the reason why that information came so quickly because that's information we've been looking for, you know. Um, go, ahead, um, go ahead, Justin. Yes. So, yeah, well, I put kind of the backdrop in there. But um, I normally go to the mounds, and I've – I've uh, recently been visiting you know, around the country. So uh, so far, I've been to uh, went to Louisiana to the Bird Mound down there. Actually, I'm a percussionist, so play congas as well. And I took my the first experience of taking my drums on the top of the mound because um, in the experience that I had was. It was a pretty calm day down in Louisiana. It was actually pretty hot. And uh went over the top, and when I got up there, all of a sudden, you know, I started um, playing. Then the wind just kicked up. And, you know, and so that experience, um, and from what I was told, you know, prior to, that normally when that happens, the ancestors acknowledge that you're out there. And yeah. um, th- then you start experiencing the monarch butterflies as well that will start yeah. circling you. And um, and so I've been to several mounds. I'm here in the uh, Atlanta, Georgia territory. So Etowah Mounds, uh, the Amorgi out in Macon, Georgia. Etowah Mounds is uh, the Cartersville territory. So that's um, probably about, that one's about 45 minutes away. Making is maybe about 15 minutes. I've been to the mounds in Tennessee up on um, Memphis campus over there. A um, couple in Indiana. And so whenever, if I'm in a different state, that's the first thing that I look for is to go and even, you know, because I'm in the field of property management maintenance. So a lot of times um, that is my safe haven, you know, a lot of stress in that field there. So when I need to, to, but uh, uh, at the um, beginning of the year, which now I know what the real beginning of the year is, not January Mm -hmm. no more, but, uh, so I start my fast, and I go as long as, you know, I can when I get clearance, you know, to end that. Um, the longest I went um, was on a 78-day fast. And so, wow. and that's basically I eat once a day. Um, normally when, at the end of the day when I break my fast for dinner, and it uh, consists of, uh, veggies and uh, fruit and, you know, water. So I'm um, eliminating all, you know, regular juices and things like that, sugary juices. Um, mm-hmm. uh, in between, I may do some, um, you know, berries or some nuts or something, you know, while I'm at work. But um, And so while I'm on the mounds, it's uh, – Studying out the Etowah Mounds, it's the river that flows right there, and it's got like some banks there too. Um, mm-hmm. And I've been practicing, you know, really intuition um, while I'm there, and it's people had just automatically, you know, just come up to you because the attraction is, um, you know, the law of attraction comes into play too. And so really uh, um, um, practicing um, sharing with people and been surprised of, you know, a lot of people. I, I met 
people that was from my hometown in Pennsylvania that came to the mountains here. And so it's like wow. almost seems like coincidence, but I know it's not coincidence. And it's meant to be for me to be out there that day. Yeah. And so experiences, um, life-changing because a lot of times it's families that come out there. They don't know that they're coming in with a tourist mindset. And so when you visit the mountains, you have to go with the mindset that this is yours. And um, it's just paving because they're giant altars. Um, I do, uh, you know, get out on the top and sun gaze as well. Um, so that's been, you know, the more and more I do it, the more, you know, it's almost like an eclipse that happens when you, you know, to look at the sun for that, you know, length of period of time. Um, yeah. And it's like a blue film that just goes right over it. And, you know, so it's just received. And so the very first time I went, I um, enlightenment, um, and awareness um, has spiked up, and you know, so things are you're a little more sensitive to, I should say, a lot more really sensitive to uh, things that's happening around you, um, where a lot of people may just walk past something or you know, kind of ignore it, and you know, you have been enlightened to to it. Um, I had people walk up to me and. Hey, uh, it's something about you, you know, and um, that was mm-hmm. the experience we were in um, uh, a Mounds down in Macon. My niece came down um, a couple, about, a couple, about a month or so ago, a couple months, and um, she. I took her down for the first time that she'd been to the mountains. She's from Pennsylvania, and we went down. My brother lives in Macon area, so we went down there. And so we had uh, Albion's was on the um, came up on the top, and they were um, it was a one woman with her children. She, she has twin boys, and they were doing a school project, and so <laughs> that was a history lesson for them. And so by the time they left, uh, they went, they took pictures with us actually, and you know, it was like well, we got the we got the real information here today so yes. about you know who the mound builders really were and things in uh, Washita. And so yes. and we you know sat down with them and you know they wanted to take pictures and pretty much say we for their school project that they actually met you know original yes. Yes. Uh, uh, people of the land here in the airs. Yes. So this is the type of experience that you have people visiting the mounds. And not only that, when I left, so along my job sites and things, I just sent, posted a, some pictures a little while ago. When you're in that vein of thought and stuff like that, all of a sudden those butterflies will reappear wherever you are. You'll start noticing them, and uh, they'll start circling around you. It's kind of like confirmation of the thought process that you've been going through. And so yeah. and acting on that. So this has been my experience, uh, you know, during that far as we getting grounded and, uh, you know, walking around without your uh, shoes on and everything. Yeah. Uh, is, yeah. That's Islam. Yeah. Islam, ideal. Islam. Islam. You know, um, when we when we when we uh, align with nature, we will see uh, animals and and other uh, living beings in nature uh, gravitating towards us in ways that they that they had not done before. Islam, go ahead, Justice. Go ahead, Justice. Islam, Melanie Turner Lawrence Day. Um, that was my younger brother, Mikiel, just speaking. I just come from the mounds, matter of fact, at the Amogi uh, State Park Museum. I spent a couple hours down there today and um, mm-hmm. did my meditation prayer and some studying and had an opportunity to educate a, educate a ranger. So it was a great demonstration, and I lighted him. His 
knowledge was basically what the American Indians' knowledge was of that. But deep down inside, he knew who the mound builders were, Washington D. Dugamania. And um, he admitted to that, you know, his job was to say what he's told to say and what he's taught to say. But he realizes there's a real truth. And now he's just working part time because the museum's not open. So he's in and out just basically checking on things. And he was real polite. Uh, and first, he was very polite, very open minded and had the willingness to recognize that a people has been awakened and they're coming back to claim what has always been theirs. So it, it was a great day. As a matter of fact, I was late getting back here. Normally it, it closed at five. I was down there to about six, six o'clock tonight. Yeah. So and the gate let you out. But that was a good experience, you know, with the prayer. And I go down there mostly Wednesday, Saturday, and Sundays. Each week, yes, and I spend a lot of time up on top and communicating. So I just wanted to share that Islam. I yield. Islam, that's beautiful. Thank you both for sharing that. Because ideally, ideally, this is what is the ideal uh, uh, situation with what with what you just said about, uh, for example, Albions who are there uh, telling the stories the way they're told to tell them. The reason that they are there telling those stories and they're actually not there anymore um, is because they know that we're supposed to be there telling the stories. As people come to see the mounds, the Moors are supposed to be standing there saying what you all said while you were there. Yes, they know yes. that. And so as we move forward in this nation building and government building process, we are, again, many nations and governments who are one, because we're one bloodline. And as we move through this process, we're, it's going to be where the Moors will be the ones greeting everyone at the north gate, saying, yes, this is our land, this is, our, this is what happened here, yeah. this is what happened there, um, you know, and you are actually meeting the actual bloodline and birthright of, to all of that. That is actually where we're going. All we have to do right now is make it so that when we move into those places, that um, that the estate takes care of us as we do that. And we're working on that part right there. That's the part we're working on. We're very close. And we're actually already pretty much there. We just have a few other little switches to, 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 to flip. But as government, we are to do what the others were doing. For example, don't you ever wonder why a museum curator is considered a government job, so to speak? It's because we're supposed to be there telling that story. Exactly. Yeah, you know, uh, there are, uh, and for example, again, um, um, tour guides and things like that. They, they're, those, the Albions are tour guides. We are the actual storytellers. We're the ones who know the real story. They can't tell the truth. If they were telling our story, what would we, what would they, what would we be needed for if, if they can tell our story? They can't. It's, it's against the rules and the laws of government for them to tell our story and for us to sit back quietly while they do that. It is our responsibility to do that. And that is where we're going right now, is we're moving into our rightful place every which way possible. We have to, again, know the rest of the stories and the ancestors and the Akashic records within each one of us is giving us the stories of what really happened with us mm -hmm. and how, uh, how we've always been the grandest, most powerful, most mighty nation on the earth. And we actually, some might disagree because of the way they see themselves right now. We're still the most powerful, mighty nation on the earth. Even in our sleep, they still needed our signatures to do anything. That's how you know who's in control, who's signing the checks. We were repeatedly and did not know it. 
Now we know that we're the creditors to all the nations of the earth. That's how you know who's in charge, who's doing the signing. And see, the others, the, the foreign occupation, uh, and we don't, we're not mad at them. We, we, we're grateful that, that, the place, that the placeholder was holding the place, but now it's time for, for the, 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 the real heirs to be there in our rightful spaces and places and in alignment. Okay. So the occupiers, even when they sign things, it doesn't really mean anything. They still have to have at least one of us signing in everything that's done on this land. And I've said that before, I'll say it again. They used to call it the quote unquote token black, who did not know that the rest of them couldn't do none of the stuff they were doing if that person didn't if that person didn't sign anything. If that person said, you know what, I'm out of here, I quit. And it was just out beyond, they would have to shut down and stop doing whatever it is. They were doing whatever organization they were running and all of that. There had to be at least one of us somewhere. I don't care if it was the janitor. Had to be signing something saying, you have my consent for y'all to be here and to do this. So now that we know, we're moving in the direction of all that is ours, we're going to be the, the, the earth must hear from the heirs. The earth must hear from the heirs. Now. So, Pauline, and who gave me we permission? We started to... that. Nobody. <laughs> That's why you can't speak now. So, um, we are, our story comes from us. No one else can tell that story. And, and that's why we're doing what we're doing in terms of putting things out on social media and um, the Moors are doing the court actions because when the earth hears from us, they must hear from competent heirs. Competent heirs speak the law first and foremost. Whenever the, the earth hears from the heirs, we're speaking the law. We come with the law in our mouths because we are the law. Yeah. And that's what that's the importance of the court actions. That's the importance of the court actions. Is as often as we do the court actions piece, it's telling the rest of the earth that we do know that we're the law and we know we're the sovereign jurisdiction and no one else. We know that. And that's how you prove it. Yes, That's how you prove it. And as for Islam, I like to add, you know, I'm down in my office because, like I said, the museum's not open, so people aren't getting any guidance but what they read off uh, some of the plaques down there. So it's more like a opportunity for me to educate, uh, especially with the brothers and sisters coming that's still, you know, con unconscious, not conscious who they are to uh, yeah. assist in that grand awakening. So I'm down there more, almost like a, a post for me up on the mountains yeah. where I go down there now, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sundays. Now, it gives me the opportunity to touch base with more people because I don't have the interference and the rangers are not there to educate anybody anymore or miseducate them. So it gives me the opportunity to share some light with them. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. On a consistent basis. Yes. Yeah. And just, Islam, I mean, yeah. just imagine how the rest of the earth feels when they hear from you. The actual living, you know, it's like a, almost like a living legend, so to speak, you know, when they hear from the air. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's very powerful, and they cannot wait to hear what we have to say. They can't wait. They're they're actually just looking forward to hearing from the air because it's been a, it's been a while. It's been a while, and they've been the custodians of the of of all that is ours. They've been the custodians, and they've been anxiously awaiting our return. And now that we're we've returned, we can take back all that. And the Mima Mound, that, that's another reason why I chose uh, Mima Mound here is because um, we've already 
leaned the corporations that are claiming to be Mima Mounds because the real Mima Mounds builders here are already here in the territory. And that's why I chose that place. So ch choosing it was not random. I chose it and then what I'm doing is the court action that I have on the 25th of this month is going to be calling all the corporations that were claiming that land, calling them into court and saying, you're not the head of that. We're the head of that. Um, and that Great. is rightfully ours. And anyone who is there, uh, uh, your services are no longer needed. We have it. We got it. We're here. And so whenever we go to a place like that, uh, we do the paperwork first before we go. And that's competent, Ayers, is the corporations like the Department of Natural Resources here. Uh, that corporation was claiming to have something to do with the mounds there. Well, I knew just after doing a little, just a little bit of research that they really haven't been doing much at all in terms of maintenance of the place, of the mound. You know, uh, I, the corporations have been really good at making us think that they're doing a whole lot of work that they're really not doing. We are actually fully governing right now. It just, they just make it look like so they, that's why the media was such a big deal with them. If we could, and at, I can't say if, if it's coming completely out of my vocabulary, actually, because it doesn't have any relevance at this point. But as we continue governing and taking back the, corp, uh, the, the resources, the media resources that are ours, watch how excuse me, watch how the thought processes of everyone changes. The programming changes. That's what media is. That's why they call it programs. You see these programs, quote unquote programs on TV? It's because they're putting something in the thoughts and the minds of certain ones. And they, listen, nothing they do is aimed at anybody but the heirs believe that and know it because that's how they were eating previously. And so now we're taking all we've taken all of that back. We just have to um how do you say it? I don't want to say man man it, but that kinda is what it is. We have to um utilize it. We have to use it. We have to our resources are vast. We have to use them for our nation, not just, you know, I can't do the Light to Jerry Bay show, you know. It's got to be all the moors and all the airs and everything that has to do with our nation going on there. It can't just be one little tiny, you know, and it's not tiny because one sovereign is enough to govern the whole earth. That's how powerful we are. And so it, it needs to be, we need to think nation, 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 nation nation 24 7 it has to be about all of us any resources that we take back and begin to use we must say this resource is for all the more to you i took you know i i did the paperwork but the paperwork says everybody it says all more and that's how we that who, who's going to tell this many more is no that's the part that we get. We get it. We got it. No one's going to tell that many sovereigns no. So that's why we do things the way we do them. And so um, picking a spot or picking a, a corporation or whatever it is, when we say, when we claim it, we claim it competently by the lien and the court action, and then after that, because see, after you fire everybody, then you have to put your affidavit and say, I'm, I'm, I'm the CEO of that resource. And then you just 
go on and continue doing what you're doing, taking back the estate, repossessing it, and then you can tell that resource what to do. That is the formula for everything that we do. Now, that is in preparation for where we're going next. Where we're going next is this. All more, let's just say Comcast may, I'm going to just use Empress Malo uh, 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 in this scenario. Let's just say Comcast violated her and treated her like she was a citizen. She got mad, not mad, because Empress Malo, not mad. And that's, we don't operate in mad. Empress Malo says, okay. I am going to, <laughs> I'm using her because she already knows how I feel about her. Um, and so if Ms. Malo says, okay, uh, I need to prove to them that I'm not a citizen. They treated me like a citizen. I need to prove to them I'm not a citizen. So she gets a lien ready. She calls them into court, exercising her sovereign jurisdiction. And then she says, and, and with her court, her sovereign arrest command, if they chose not to come, she sends them something saying, okay, now I'm the CEO of that. And all Moors get free, whatever, not free, but prepaid. We've already prepaid for that. So we want the best of everything that you have to offer. We want the best. And in fact, we don't want the best from you. We're giving ourselves the best because that's, that's the right language. That's the competent language. The competent language is we're all the CEOs of that, and we hereby give ourselves from our own estate everything, the best of everything that comes from Comcast in all lowercase letters because now you're speaking to a system. You're not even speaking to those who were claiming that they had some authority over that because you've been taking authority over it. So where we're going after that is this. So now Empress Malo has properly done what needs to be done with regard to Comcast in all lowercase letters. So I say, okay, Empress Malo, um, I, I, I am, I did the same thing with um, Apple. So between you and I and our, you know, all of us as a nation, because, again, we're not doing these as individuals. We're doing this as, as nation. All more. I, and I say, okay, Empress Malo, um, I issued all more brand new Apple computers. I did that, issued them all that. And you and I are going to come together and make it so that Comcast gives everyone free, or not free, because it's not free, we prepaid for it. We're going to see that Comcast, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to give you a, a sovereign credit of uh, 50 million sovereign, sovereign credit. And Comcast, now that you're the CEO and all Moors are the CEO, this group of Moors is going to give that group of Moors 50 million in sovereign credit so that you can put Comcast TV on all of our computers. That is actually, I know that sounds, you know, like not like thinking like what we're accustomed to thinking, but the only thing the Albions were doing was teaching us how to do that. That's the only reason they were there, and that's the only reason they did what they did, was to teach us how to do that. And that's where we're going from here. But we can't do that until the Moors do the court actions, you know, can competently do the liens and the court actions, and then know that when you fire them, you can't leave that place blank. You actually have to fill that space. And yes, sovereigns can do that with 150 resource companies. The ones who know how to do it, because again, we're, this is all sovereigns. We're speaking uh, not for the other sovereigns, but we're saying we're all one. 
and you don't get to bump one of us off like you did our prophet. Uh, and, and that's a little bit, you know, you don't get to, when he, when, when one of us is gone, the whole, we go another 150 years without any results. That's why we're moving as one now. Okay. Um, so that's where we're going. That's, that's, and again, we're, we're taking it step by step by step by step. And then there needs to be enough competent heirs doing the same thing. And there are now. We, but again, the more we need more because our estate is so huge. It's bad. I mean, how many companies are there out there? Those are all our resources. So the sooner um, we have more and more that are doing the court actions and getting, saving themselves from just, a, just something as simple as a, 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 and it's not simple to some, a speeding ticket. How are we going to govern the, the company when we have not yet governed the speeding ticket piece? Or the, you know, we got to, we, we, you know, and so that's where we're going. And that's the purpose of, of all of all that we're doing is there's a picture that's much bigger than what we see, have seen in the past and what we've been told in the past. You know, um, we are the CEOs of all utilities. We've got to get them out of the way. The, the commercial, the commerce piece, we got to get the, the inferior corporate commerce out of the way so that the superior sovereign commerce can take over. That's where we're going. And that's, but, but these steps have to be put in place with each one of us so that we can do that. That's why we're taking it a step at a time. So it seems, that seems slow to some. And some say, well, y'all telling them what to do, and ain't nobody, they're not even listening to y'all. Yes, they are. Oh, yes, they are. They'll call it COVID-19 and all of that. They're listening. They don't have anything else to do but listen to the air. And so that's why we're taking it, uh, uh, one court action at a time, one step at a time, and look how much progress we've made already. We have made so much progress. We freed ourselves from so much already. Those that are doing the court actions, high honors. We're freeing ourselves from so much. And that stuff has to be done with the right energy. That's why we need the star readers. We need the birth chart. And all of that, we need, we need, because we're, we're, we are whole. We're whole. We're all. We are the all. So we have to know ourselves. And then when we're feeling emotionally discombobulated, so to speak, then we can go to our star readers and those who read the birth charts and find out why are we feeling this way? Oh, it's because Jupiter's in retrograde. Well, it's because Mercury's in retrograde and your ascending is here and your, you know, your sun is here. Oh, okay, that's why I'm feeling unhinged. Let me go within and, 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 and put things back in alignment so I can continue to govern these large, vast resources that we're governing now. Okay. And the same thing goes for the buildings. That's how we know that we're about to move into the buildings. We see it coming. We see it coming. But that must be done orderly lawfully, and it has to be more than just one of us. It has to be all of us. We all have to do it. And then those of us who are, are, are active now need to be making sure that the more that are going to be waking up soon can, you know, they have equal access. There's a story in the Bibliotheliotech about the, the servants who worked in the field and some started in the morning and some started in the afternoon and some started just a little while before evening. And at the end of the day, they all got paid the same. And some were saying, well, why is it that they get paid the same as we when we were, we've been doing this all day? It's because they are the heirs just like we are. And it's not about the reward. The reward belongs to all of us already. Okay. 
So that's what that's that's what that's about. That's what that's about. Um, there was someone who wanted to say something a little earlier. Islam. Islam and first. Oh, I have a really important question. Okay, I'm I'm having well, I'm pregnant and I'm in the process of nationalizing. And I was wondering if there I, I, I reside in Alabama, and I was wondering if you knew of any um mobile um midwife doulas or anything like that because I was told that going to the hospital would be a bad idea as a national okay uh, can anyone assist her with doulas in Alabama territory or a doula who will travel to Alabama territory to assist her And a doula is the is the is what they used to call a midwife. Islam. Islam. Uh, we're actually in the process of um, getting that information. I have talked to the consuls out there about it, uh, and I understand if this um, this uh, Moabitess who's talking is probably the one who it affects personally. But um, yeah, we are looking. We are looking at it and um, finding out who can get there. I'll have some answers to tomorrow or Tuesday. Justice, do you want to give her your email address or some contact information, or you know, so that she, um, so that yes, she can contact but, you? Yes, but I think she already can get that through the um, consul in Alabama. Um, yes, I'm going to uh, the council here. I think this yes. is Jerry Arbuel. Yes, it is. Islam. Yes. Okay. All I'm, I'm waiting on my national card and all of that stuff. So okay, I was waiting. Then, yeah, I got, now I got you. Finally talked to you. Islam. Yes, finally get to talk. <laughs> Islam. 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 Yes, um, you will have some information about it by Tuesday. It's okay. Not before. Okay, because I've been trying to Google it and uh, DuckDuckGo and all of that, and it's not really showing me anything. It's not telling me anything. So you said by Tuesday? Yeah, look for midwife if you want to do it that way. Just look for look for it under midwife. Okay. And you might find some information, but yes, we'll get some information to you. I am traveling right now. That's why I've been quiet, but I heard you speak up. So I said, I better speak up. Okay. Islam. Okay. Peace. Islam. Perfect. Thank you. Islam. So, Empress, did, does that help you have that you have some information to go to go by so far? So far, yes. Okay. How many months are you, Empress? Okay. And then I'll go from there. Seven. You said you said eight, Empress. I'm sorry. I'm about. To be honest with you, I've been afraid to go to the hospital mm -hmm. because mm. so I know that it was like the end of December, like early January. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay. like September, October. Yeah, the end of September. Okay. Early October. Mm -hmm. okay. So. Ensure that you stay in contact with the Empress whose information you just received um, that's in that territory, and um, hopefully she can get, uh, and I'm sure she can get some information for you. They're, they're very competent there in that territory, Islam. Okay. Islam. Islam. Huh? Islam? Yes. Okay. Islam, this, Empress. This is Empress Chade. Um I would like to get her information, an email address, because the, my last couple of sons that I've had, um, I've had them at home, 
and um, it was just me and my spouse. We decided to do it at home, and if if just so happens she has the child at home, she will want to make sure that she has the necessary things to take care of herself uh, while she's yeah. at home, and she, yeah. she could do it, and then I... Um, um, you know, I made sure that I had, pretty much I had everything for, you know, excessive bleeding or anything else that I need. And if necessary, if it's an emergency and if you have to go to the hospital, so be it. But you can do it at home um, yourself. So I can give her that information just in case something happens and she ends up having it at home. She already have yes. all the stuff. Yes, yes. Uh, so, Empress Shaddai, do you want to, how do you want to get the information to her? I just put my um, email um, address. Email address? Okay. I don't know if you have anything to write with or if she can see it. I could put it in a chat. I don't know. Can you see the computer screen or do you want me to uh, tell you it uh, right now? Um, I just put, uh, I just sent my email address to, through the message. Okay. Is that that completed to Excel? Yes. Okay. I got it. Then I'll, I'll, I'll email you um, in, in a few sh minutes shortly, um, and okay. then we'll discuss it later, okay? Okay. 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 I yield. Thank you. Empress, you do have some help. You do have some assistance coming, it looks like. Um, and then I see another comment in the chat, uh, Empress. Uh, Justice Michelle, do you want to uh, maybe get her email there out of the chat? We we won't say the whole email on on the air, but go ahead and and get the email out of the chat so that she can uh, so that you can assist that at, at, in any manner as well. This is beautiful. This is very 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 beautiful because um, we've had a lot of scarecrows put in our minds about having our children outside of the capitalist system. That system was killing people and continues to do so, uh, so because they're not competent. So we, we, we have to do what, what we did previously, what we did throughout history, is assist one another in that manner. And um, as we continue to rise, those facilities will be um, Moorish facilities. Those hospitals and things like that, as we, again, do the same thing that I mentioned just a little while ago about the Comcast piece. You know, it can be any of the other uh, um, corporations. Those are all corporations, all, every last one of them. We can move that corporate uh, animal science out of the way because that's really what all of that is. They, my, they all, you know, that's animal science. That's not really for the heirs. As we continue to rise, we're going to have to uh, to do all that we need to <laughs> help us Malo. <laughs> we're going to have to do, we, you know, that. But see, again, remember, we taught them everything that they know about birthing. We taught them everything, and as we continue to rise, everything that we needed to know about that, we all already know now. So um, I'm glad that you have several uh, sources that can uh, assist you there, Empress, as well. And we look forward to the birth of yet another heir coming into the earth. We love it because that means we're all wealthier every time even one heir is brought into the earth realm. The heirs that are here are wealthier. I'm looking forward to when we're having so many crowning ceremonies, so many crowning ceremonies that it's just that we just Every five minutes, there's a new crowning ceremony. More heirs being born. We're headed there, too, and we have to prepare for that. That's what this is all about, is we have to prepare. We have to prepare lawfully, get our courts up and running, uh, and they're already up and running. We're there already. 
we we've made so much progress that we we actually have to look at the progress and say that's progress right there. We 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 got it. We got it. We can do this. And we're going to continue doing things just that way. Islam. I, I'm not sure if you wanted to say something, Justice Dawood, or not. There was a lot of noise coming from your background, so I, I went ahead and muted. But if you wanted to say something, star six, Islam. Okay, um, that, that was the grandchildren. <laughs> no, I wanted, I wanted, okay, I wanted, I wanted to, to sure. say what I wanted to say is just on a, to, as you know, as Moors, we have to be proactive. So that sister, wherever she is, she's in Alabama. Uh, what I'm going to do is I got her email. I'm going to contact her, and I'm going to lean that hospital so we can do a – because if we have to go there, we we'll, we'll, we got to do our paperwork to proceed to have going over to that hospital so they don't try any shenanigans. Yes. They, yes. Yeah, so. Now, that is how we assist one another. <clears throat> so that's what I want to do. So I got – I wrote down the email, so I'm going to contact her. Later when you finish. The is already in the process of doing that. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Good. That's good. <laughs> okay. That's fine. That was great thinking, Justice. That was great thinking. The consuls there are already on it. Come on, Southeast consuls. Stay on it. I love it. That's beautiful. Yes, we have some great consuls here. Yes, yes, beautiful. Yeah. We'd love to hear that about about our Moorish nation, Islam. Beautiful. That's how you do it. Don't tell me we don't know how to govern our state. Yes, we do, and we're going to continue to do that. Islam. I'm excited about the air. <laughs> that's what that's what I'm really excited about. Anyone there? Islam? Islam, she, she'll be back. She'll be back. Yeah, she'll be back. She just got booted. <laughs> Islam. Islam. Okay, Islam. Grand Rising, more. Grand yeah, Rising. Back. Peace and love. Grand Rising. <laughs> Peace and love. Peace and love. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Morris. Islam. I love Islam. it. Islam. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think my energy got really high, and when my energy gets really high, um, um, the my 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 electronics respond. They tend to respond to that. So, um, but yes. Yeah. Are there any other questions or, or issues or anything that we need to discuss it's, with regard to – yes, go ahead, Justice. Yes, I, I, I sent in an affidavit prior to your uh, uh, conference call Thursday uh, to Social Security, and I expressed myself basically as the CEO, but, but in, in a singular position, not as a, a collective group. Because yes. I didn't know the information that you gave out Thursday, so is that valid, or should I redo it? I would I would suggest that you redo it, okay. Um, okay. and and um, change it so that it it says do this for all more, and then at the bottom remember the statement that we talked about um, on the last call that we put at the bottom of our document. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I wrote that down. Yes. 
Um, and I'll repeat the statement really quickly for those who um, for those who who don't know. At the bottom of our affidavit, we have put our nation first instead of our own issues. You know how um, you may have um, maybe say a a bill due that that they are saying is due to the straw. Um, when we notify them that we're none of that, we're none of the corporations, we're not a straw, we're none of that, we're the living. When we do our um, demonstrations, we say, this is for me and all more. And then at the bottom, once we said what we need to say and, and asserted our sovereign authority, we say all, instead of signing them, uh, I say all sovereign original indigenous Moorish American autographs for this document and for all sovereign Moorish government documents are on the public record at America. Um, and so then instead of, uh, yeah, and then I'll put a gold seal on it with my red thumbprint, my right red thumbprint on the bottom. And then I also put our government gold seal and then at the top on the front of, uh, on the first page at the, in the upper right hand corner of the document, I put my right red thumbprint and I signed at a 45 degree angle going up, um, my, my, uh, sovereign appellation. And that way we're speaking with one voice for our whole nation. I don't just want to be the only one who is, um, able to do the things like get policy enforcers off of me, but then the rest of the Moors keep getting, you know, in whatever they're, you know, being violated or however. We all speak, you know, we got each other's back on all of this. Even the Moors who are asleep, we have their backs too. Until they wake up, we got them, you know. And then each Moor has to demonstrate that they ha they know that they have the uh, the sovereign authority, and that's what the court actions and all of that is about. When when we speak for uh, when we we're not speaking for Moors because no one represents the Moors. We don't even represent one another. But when we say all Moors, that means that when you all come to this territory, that that includes you here too. And when I come to your territory, that's telling policy enforcers or whoever that's still remaining, because they're leaving really quickly, um, that, you know, and they should be, uh, they should be gone already, really. Um, but that, that's letting them know that, you know, no matter who the more is, it's still, even if it's a brand new more just waking up and they may not be as competent as some who, who were, who've been awake a week or two longer, maybe. And that's, 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 you know, the Moors are waking up with their eyes wide open, so that's not a bet either. The Moors will know, you know. So, um, which, uh, I'm sorry, which affidavit, Justice Theodore, are you referring to? In the chat, you said, can you post a template of this affidavit, please? So he he wants you to hold it. He just didn't want me to have it. All right, so we... See, I was gonna play with you, Joey. <laughs> See, that's what I was gonna do. Okay, which one's Justice yeah, Theodore? That's what I wanted to do. Right. Now, which which one, Justice Theodore? Let me see. The one you just mentioned. Oh, it's that. I put that on all my affidavits. Just about all of them. There's only one or two, like uh, my court actions, where I'll sign my autograph on the bottom of the court action. But even under that, I still put that statement under it that says this document is for all. Is uh, and I'll read it again. So that and I wanted to be sure when I put it there that I was not representing anyone, but that I was saying when one of us speaks, all of us speak. And this court action is, is making sure you don't violate any of my brothers and sisters either. Uh, the statement is all sovereign, original, indigenous, Moorish American autographs for this document and for all sovereign Moorish National Republic federal government uh, documents are on the public record at America. 
And then uh, there are some, we have some Washita, uh brothers and sisters whom we absolutely adore on this call. So they would put all sovereign original indigenous Moorish American autographs for this document and all sovereign Washita government documents are on the public record at America. So they would put that on theirs. So whatever government or nation uh, that you uh, are that you're presenting, because we don't represent, we we are present. We're the real thing. We're the presentation of the government. We are that. All of us. And so, whichever government or nation that you um, are are that you are, you would put their um, information in there, because we honor all Moorish governments and nations. Okay. Um, so, uh, having said that, is there are there any other questions or or comments or anything anything that uh, any of you want the the nations to know about all that's going on? Because I can tell you this: when we put this information and these calls out on the public record. There are people everywhere on the earth listening to this. This I know for sure. I didn't know that, that they could listen, but they can. So um, they're learning and watching the air stand. And that to them, you know, I know they're, but the feedback that we get is beautiful feedback. They're so happy for us and they support us 100%. Go ahead and please. Empress Melo, were you going to say something? I'm trying to get Islam? <laughs> yes, go ahead, Empress. Yes, I was just going to say as a suggestion, um, everyone can you know decide what they want to do. But for me, I started off doing the mailings with the with the green return receipts. After a while, sometimes the post office, either they turn it, return them back or it takes a long time. And to save myself some time, I actually don't even use those. I just use the green, white certified mail. And then what I do if I want to find out whether or not they, re they were received, I just go to USPS.com. And then I can do a cert I can type in the, um, the uh, certified mail number and it'll tell me that it was delivered. So. And it saves it saves only a lot of time and <laughs> some some uh, work and that's all. It's not my yield. It's long. It's long. Um, a lot of mine, uh, a lot of the green slips um, these days, I've not been getting them back as quickly. But it's because I've started using the natural, the universal natural area code on mine, along with the uh, mailing location. I use um, latitude and longitude, and I also use the natural area code for the consulates here. And the natural area code, if you do a little Google search on natural, uh, universal natural area code, or just natural area code, you will see that that for every inch, for every inch of this land, Every inch of it has a different natural area code, and it's a, it's like a 10-digit, it's, it's alphanumeric, so it has letters and numbers, and it's a 10-digit code that no matter where you are in space, you can even find out exactly where someone is if you use the natural area code. I was just thinking to myself, our ancestors, I already know the fact that they call it natural means that it's something our ancestors put in place. Why would they need a natural area code? Because they're out there and they want to know where we are. So I started using that and the postal system, the post office knows about them already. They may act like they don't, but they do. And so um, natural area code, if I'm in the kitchen, it has one natural area code. And then if I go to the living room, it has a slightly different natural area code. That's how precise and detailed our ancestors are. It moves, the natural area code is like a, it's like a, 
it's like a magnet. It stays wherever you go. It, it's going to change it and tell you exactly where you are to the inch almost. So um, having said that, it is, we're at the two-hour mark. Um, let's see, I just received mine back from the IRS. It was not signed, just listed the city and zip. It took about eight weeks to correspond to fifty delivered. Yes. Uh, the, green, the green slip, you know, even if it doesn't have a signature on it when you get it back, the fact that you got it back says they delivered it because sometimes they're not as thorough, okay? Um, again, they're, they're not as, you know, as competent sometimes, or at least sometimes they're in a rush. And in other, in other instances, there's not enough people working to even do the, do the, to do the job properly. Okay. So, Islam, um, Empress. Islam. Uh, real quick, what, where do you put that natural area code? You put it at the, after you put, for example, uh, Arizona Territory, and you put it in brackets, or you just put it outside? I just put it, I put NAC under, I put NAC and it's under everything. So after oh, okay. you do Arizona Territory, then you put NAC and I put, uh, and then I put the natural area code. And I don't put colons or semicolons or anything. I just put okay. NAC and then the natural area code, or space and then the natural area code. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. And um, <laughs> I have a feeling, Islam. And how do you find that natural uh, code? Do you can you just you, Google it by your address? You can Google it. Yeah, you can Google. You don't you don't have an address, but Google it by the corporate address. And yeah. then when you Google it by the corporate address, and it takes you to the site. At the top, it's gonna say um, not defined or access denied or something. Pay no attention to that. Look down at the map that's provided there, and at the bottom of the map, right under it, there's going to be this little strip that tells you the latitude, longitude, and the the um and the and the um natural area code. Thank you. Yes, so even if it says access denied, that's not true. It's right there, down at the bottom. That uh, I believe that is it, right there, Justice Theodore. And know that that is the that is the system, one of the systems that the military has used over the years as well in terms of um, they kept that from us because it says natural, but they know that our ancestors are, are otherworldly as well. And so that helps from when you're way up there, you know. We have so much to learn about ourselves. It's just unbelievable. It's just it's going to take us a thousand years to learn everything about who we really are and how they've always known who we are and all of that. Um, one last thing. The reason why previously our parents, before they got married, they had to take a blood test. Remember that? Some of you might be too young to remember that. But before, our parents used to t take a blood test then they would sign some documents, and then they would take their fingerprints before they got married. Remember that? That actually was to keep track of who was with who, because they knew coming that any children, descendants that they had, those descendants would be the heirs as well. They knew that even before we were born. Even before we were born, they knew that when our mother, sovereign mothers, got to the hospital, you know, said she was having a baby or found out she was pregnant, they were, they already knew, we already know by the record that that's an heir that she's going to have. And that's why they did that, this was to keep track. I have found out recently just by looking in the records that every inch of everything, every nano inch of everything about us, they've been keeping track of it. I recently found uh, Empress Michelle, uh, thank you for this information. Empress Michelle and, uh, and I have recently seen where they kept track of even all of the debt down to the penny since 1790. 
And I don't think it was the Albions that were doing that. I think it was the system that we know about, that system that our ancestors put in place before the act. Because the system had to be in place if they knew from 1790 how much was there. The system had to be in place before the Albions got their hands on it. That's the only way you would know exactly down to the penny how much money was spent, how much was spent in order to keep the estate of the heirs in a certain condition. Okay? So they've always known who we, we are. And they're going to do kind of like a, well, they're on their way out the door, so they're not even going to be here to do that. But Delusional fucking cult is what you are. They've always known exactly who we are. And the ones like the ones, uh, hi, we love you. We love you. And you can't speak right now because we've muted you, but we love you anyway. So um, if we were delusional, he wouldn't be here because no one spends time with delusional people. They just move on about their business and let the people go, right? No, they come every week, every time we have a call. Uh, so we love them, but they have to be quiet. No, I, I'm just peace pointing out that and, you guys are and, No, you still have to be quiet, like I said. Peace and grand rising to the air. Uh, and until next week, grand rising. Grand rising. Grand rising. Grand rising. Grand much love. 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 Peace and love. Grand rising. Grand rising. Grand rising. Grand rising. Grand rising. Peace and love. Peace and love. Grand rising. Grand rising.